In this action-packed episode, we're going to get our bullets working so we can kill our aliens and be killed as well. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Chromework Studios in beautiful Ottawa, Canada. I'm Andrew Tomac, your technology teacher, back with another coding lesson for you today again. So um, we are working on part two of our big Space Invaders project. If you this is your first time catching up with this project, we are making an authentic clone of Space Invaders, right down to the finest detail. Um, I've really worked hard to make a project here for you that uh, is as close as possible a copy to the original game. So we're getting into some hardcore simulation of arcade game mechanics and graphics here. So if you're into arcade games and if you're into coding scratch, you are in the right place, guys. So in part one, let's go have a look at what we accomplished here. This is the part one file that we completed last week. Um, you can get caught up to where we are right here by just grabbing the uh, catch up file at chromeworks.ca slash lessons. You'll find a link to that and you can call this project up and get started exactly where we are here so that you can get hit the ground running or you can go back and watch part one of our lesson and start from the beginning there so in part one here's what we got accomplished we uh, got our funky music going the doom doom sound that accelerates as um, we get fewer and fewer bad guys. We've got our aliens marching across the screen the way we want them to. We have them spawning so that different rows of them look differently. Our character is moving across the screen. He's stopping and when he gets to the edge of the defined area of the screen, but he's not able to shoot yet. So our first step here in coding is gonna be to, we're gonna add some bullets. So let's get to that right now. Okay, so we're, I've created a laser object in here. Let's stop this sound, okay. I've created a laser object here. Let's have a look at its costume. There's a couple of different pieces to it that are gonna be relevant as we go through here. So the basic laser is just a simple yellow rectangle, nothing much to it. I've also created some different black graphics here that are all different types of basically random wreckage that this bullet is going to cause. Now, the only time this, these um, different graphics are going to be activated is on our shield. You'll, you guys will um, remember that in Space Invaders, you have shield at the bottom of the screen, just like this fella here, that you're going to be able to, you'll be able to shoot through them and the enemies will be able to try to shoot through them as well. And they'll deteriorate slowly over time. Now, Space Invaders have a classic kind of way of doing this where it looks not like they're, um, like holes are being carved in them, but like they're being eaten away a little bit. And so the, these graphics that I've created are a way to try and simulate that. We're gonna be painting on top of these shield graphics with um, some random explosion graphics that are gonna hack these irregular holes out. And these holes, because they're black, they will mean that they that the bullets that are coming through won't stop them anymore. So as our shields degrade, we'll actually be able to stop, um, or sorry, the bullets will be able to carry on shooting through them, which is kind of cool. So this, was, uh, this is one of the cooler aspects of what I enabled here. We're not gonna get to it right away, though. Let's just get the straight old bullets going that can destroy our aliens. So back to our laser again, which is right here. Let's put the proper graphic on it. We don't want to be shooting these blobs. So our bullets are not going to be able to start firing until the round has actually begun. The message that's received, we're not going to use a green flag here because the green flag starts off some other stuff. So the actual game gets underway when we receive a message that says start marching. And that's what gets the aliens going. Let's grab another when I receive start marching. And at the same time that the aliens start moving, we'll allow ourselves to start shooting as well. All right, we need a repeat until block here. So this is setting when we're allowed to shoot. And we're gonna tell it that this whole shooting routine is only gonna be enabled while there's enemies on the screen. We're keeping track of our enemies using a variable called enemy count. 
So let's go ahead and code it so that we can keep running this until enemy count is equal to zero. Let me just drag that in. There we go. So this loop allowing us to shoot, detecting whether we can shoot or not, is only going to run while there's enemies on the screen. Then it'll stop itself, and this will automatically kill that process. Okay, so now we're going to check and see uh, whether we can shoot or not. So this is all about limiting our shooting. We can't shoot when there's no enemies on the screen. We also can't shoot if we're shooting too fast. We're going to control that with a variable as well. So we're going to say, if I'm holding down the fire button and I'm allowed to shoot, then we'll shoot. So we need an and symbol here. Let's go ahead and grab, it, grab an and from our green operators blocks. So let's grab our when key space pressed here from our sensing blocks and that will tell us that we've actually hit our firing button. You could go with a different firing button if you want, no big deal. And over on the right hand side here, so we've set up a variable called can shoot. This is a binary variable. It's either going to be at zero or at one through the whole course of the game. If it's at zero, we can't shoot. And if it's at one, we can shoot. So let's say that we can't, this bullet is not going to work unless can shoot is equal to one. So now we're checking for two things. If those two things are true, we're gonna proceed inside this loop where we're gonna continue making our bullet. So the first thing we're gonna do as soon as we shoot is switch our ability to shoot off again. So set can shoot to zero. So now, the next time it comes around this loop and we try to shoot, we're not going to be able to shoot. It's, the bullets are going to be disabled until we turn them back on again. And they'll be turned back on again when a timer goes off, basically. And so that's what this is all about. Okay, and now we're going to create a clone of ourselves. So let's go create a clone. So we're making a copy of this bullet that will, um, that will start to move up the screen. Okay, we're also going to make a shoot sound here. I have a lovely alien shooting sound here that's taken from the original Space Invaders game. Let's have a listen to that. And that is authentic gaming goodness from 1978, boys and girls. Okay, so let's play that sound. Start sound, shoot. All right, so even this will be working so far. You can see that... Now, we can only fire the once, right? Because our variable is back to zero. So you heard the sound the first time and that's working so far, but now we're gonna have to turn the sound back on again. So we created a clone of ourselves. You also can't see that because it's invisible. Our laser's invisible and our, um, our clone of the laser is also invisible. Okay, before we do anything else, let's turn the bullet back on again here. So let's wait. Now here's our delay time before we can shoot again. I'm going to change it to 0.5 seconds. That sounds about right for the way that the original Space Invaders game moved, uh, but you can tweak that if you're not happy. And all we do at the end of this is we set our variable back again. So set variable can shoot back to one. So we're still not able to shoot because our can shoot variable, which we can have a look at here, is still set to zero. It's supposed to be resetting itself. There it is at zero. It's supposed to be resetting itself, but we haven't initialized it. So once the game starts running, it'll turn back to one every half second after we shoot. But right now it's stuck at zero. There's no way for it to get at one. So we actually do need a green flag event to start this guy off. I'd forgotten about that. So let's go under the green flag. We're just gonna set that variable can shoot to one. So set variable can shoot to one. That will initialize the variable the first time and get it all set up and ready to go here. And we'll already see a nice change here in our project. We'll click the green flag. And you can see that now my bullet sound is actually happening. I'm creating clones, but they're invisible right now. That's why we can't see them. And you can see that no matter how hard I match that button, I'm going to shoot, able to shoot two shots per second. Okay, looking good. Let's hide that variable. Okay, while we're in here uh, setting up our character, let's also create a little forever loop here. So we'll go forever, and we're just going to tell 
our laser, our reference laser, to go and follow our spaceship around like a puppy to go everywhere it goes. So go to spaceship. And so that will make sure that it follows the spaceship around so that whenever we do create a bullet, it's created in the proper location. Okay, so now we need to make this guy appear and start doing stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna start a when I started the clone block here. So let's go to our events. Oh, actually, sorry, it's under control here. When I started the clone. And we're gonna give our, instruct, our um, bullets instructions on what they should do when they're created. Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is have them appear. So let's go to our looks menu here. It'll grab a show and that will make them appear. Um, we want to make sure that they're wearing their laser costume because later on we're going to be changing around their costumes to some of the random damage costumes called black, black one, black two, black three, etc. here. So let's make sure that we're wearing the right costume here. We'll go switch costume to laser and now we can actually start them moving forward quite easily here. So we're gonna use another repeat until. I've become quite a fan of repeat untils here. They basically take the place of a forever loop that we break out of. So instead of going repeat until something happens, we could go repeat forever. And then if something happens, break out of the loop. But this is an elegant way to end the loop when we know something predictable is gonna happen. So repeat until we leave the screen, which is touching the edge of the screen. Let's grab this block here that says touching mouse pointer and we can change it. There's a little option here that says touching edge. So when we leave the screen, we're going to delete ourselves um, basically. So at the end of this whole block here, let's go delete this clone. That'll get rid of our guy. And inside this loop here, let's just get our bullets moving. So let's set a speed of 10 here. That seems pretty good for um, the speed of the original Space Invaders game. Let's test this out here. Whoa, I made a little mistake here, right? So we're not actually gonna move 10 steps. Let's change, uh, because our guys are pointing to the, uh, our um, spaceship is pointing to the right. We don't want him pointing upwards because we actually are moving him left and right here. So we're gonna have to use a different command to get our spaceship moving around. We can't, sorry, to get our um, laser moving around. We can't tell it to move. We, we could change its direction here. We could say point in direction zero, which is up and then start moving 10 steps. Let's try that out just for laughs. But now we have another problem. Our guys are still facing to the right, right? So that's not gonna solve our problem. Pointing our, our guy like that. I mean, I guess we could change the graphic around to be facing in that direction. This is just getting really complicated. So the simpler way to solve this problem is not to do this, but simply to change the bullet's Y coordinate. We'll tell it to start moving up the, up the screen, not by moving, which is a relative function. Move means move in the direction you're facing. But in this case, we're going to move straight up on the screen, which is a Y coordinate. So let's go change our Y by 10. And that's a simple and elegant way to do the movement where we don't have to worry about the positioning. We know our laser is already facing in the right direction. And so all we have to do is get it moving. Beautiful. Okay, looking good so far. All right. So you can see I just um, added a little note here to say what's happening in this script. I'm trying to comment my code a little bit more in the future just to make it easier for you guys to follow along. It's good practice for you guys as well. If you go back and look at something you made months or years ago or if someone else is remixing it, it's sometimes a little tricky to figure out the logic that was going on. So just having a little label here and there to tell people what's going on in your code or even to tell yourself will really help out a lot. So our laser's working properly. Now we need something to shoot at. So let's go and make the aliens destructible. Let's go have a look over at the alien sprite. We've got a whole bunch of code here already that um, got them moving around. Basically spawning, moving, and flipping is what we got them doing. They flip direction and move down. They're relentlessly marching down the screen across and down across and down like some demonic typewriter. Okay, so 
let's go ahead and um, start coding. This is the main block of code here that gives the aliens their instructions. And most of the other stuff they do is going to branch off from this code. So we're already in here checking to see if our guys are too far left or too far right off of the screen before they decide to flip. And we just broadcast that message to tell them to flip directions. Right underneath here, we're going to do another if statement. So let's grab an if statement, put it inside the repeat, but underneath the other if statement. And inside there, we are going to detect to see whether we're touching one of those lasers. So let's go ahead and touch the laser uh, under sensing. We'll go touching laser. You can tell I'm an Austin Powers fan. Those of you who are nerdy enough to recognize that reference. Okay, let's go ahead. Um, we're going to create a new block here to send our uh, code off into a different branch where it's going to be checking to see which alien you killed and it'll assign a different point score depending on which alien we killed. We could put it all inside here, but just for the sake of tidiness, because this is a totally different function, we'll just create a custom block here. Let's call it check costume. This is another way that I'm making my code much easier to follow. It's something I've been doing a lot of lately, is creating these custom blocks to kind of section off my code into different functions that do different things. It makes it really easy for other people to read. So let's go check costume. And inside there in a little bit, we're going to be checking um, to see which costume our guy is wearing and we'll assign a different score depending on what we got here. Okay. But um, now that we've checked our costume, we're going to go ahead and switch our costume. Because we're dead, we're going to switch our costume to an explosion. So let's go switch costume to the whole bunch of costumes here for their different shapes. And there's explosion. Explosion is fairly simple. This is authentic, legit Space Invaders explosion. It's hard to see here against the different colors. Let me see if I can... No, there's really no way to show it here unless I put it up against a background. Um, anyway, you'll see it in just a moment when we start shooting. So switch costume to explosion. And then we're going to send a message to the uh, back to the laser telling itself to delete the beam. We don't want the beam to shoot through a million different guys, right? It, if we didn't delete this laser as soon as it hit the guy, he would the laser would continue flying and destroy all five aliens in the row. I can probably demonstrate that for you right now, actually. So, um, but let's finish a little bit of coding here for, before we do that. So we're going to broadcast a message. Control. No, actually, sorry, I always get that confused. Broadcast a message that says alien dead we'll go back and look at our laser in a second but we'll just leave that um hanging for now we're also going to play a sound effect we have a lovely sound effect here called invader killed again that's an original space invader sound from the original video game so we actually want to freeze the script here so let's go play sound until done invader killed. So what this will do is it'll, it'll um, let the explosion graphics stay on the screen for a little bit of time before it disappears. Otherwise, the script will just go ahead and switch it back to a laser and well, it'll eventually delete the clone and hide it. So before it gets deleted, we're just going to add another second here for us to see the alien explosion before it goes. And that's how we're using the play sound until done command here to kind of delay the code a little bit. We could have added an actual weight in here, but this is actually, I think, more elegant. All right, we're also going to change a variable here, change enemy count by minus one. That will take our tally down so that we'll know when our round is over. And then we'll delete our clone, which of our bullet as well. Oh, sorry, Clay, delete our clone of the alien here. There we go. So as I said, this is broken still. We're gonna be deleting an entire row at a time. Let me demo that for you. So let's click the green flag. And you can see that when I shoot an alien, it kills the entire row of aliens quite effectively. And you can see that explosion graph is happening there now. If 
you uh, if you want some kind of a supercharging power up or something in your game, if you want to modify it, this would be something you could do, right? You could uh, put the, um, the destruction of the bullet into an if statement and say while my power up is deactivate is activated. I can shoot multiple guys. That's just a cool little addition that you can add to your game if you wanted to. It's a little bit too easy now, I think, though. All right. So the last thing, the last step here is to go back to the laser again and tell him when I receive that message, when I receive alien dead, I'm going to delete that clone of the bullet. Now, a when I receive here will delete all the clones of all the bullets on the screen. Fortunately, though, there's pretty much never going to be more than one bullet on the screen at a time. So that'll be pretty transparent to us. Okay, let's test it out again. And you see that one little block of code here fixed everything for us. And now we're shooting working quite nicely. We've got a nice little Space Invaders game going here already. We're making really good progress here, guys. Okay. Okay, so we haven't scored any points yet, and that's where this check costume block comes in. We're going to just have it look and see what costume is the dead guy wearing and assign different points depending on what he's going to do. And that's just a bunch of if statements. So let's go ahead and set that up in here. We'll do the first one, and then we'll do some fancy duplicating to make it happen again. So let's go if... So... Um, as I explained last week, we set up the aliens with a bunch of identical costumes. The costumes in row one are going to be 1A and 1B, basically. So that uh, it's the, the two costumes that our aliens are wearing. So on the top row here, our, costume, our guys are wearing costumes 1A and 1B. And then in the next row, they're wearing costumes 2A and 2B, and then 3A and 3B. You can see that 2A and 2 and 3A and 2B and 3B are identical to each other. But we created copies of them anyway just to make the coding easy. So we said first row wear costume one, second row wear costume two, costume three, etc., like that. So we basically have to see whether they're wearing a selection of costumes here. We're going to have to define a range of costumes here. So in this case, we're talking about we're assigning a score, a point score to the three different kinds of robots um, going basically in ascending order. So the lower they are on the screen, the fewer points they're worth. So up here in the top row, these kind of skull shaped aliens, you can see here, I guess the lower ones look more like skulls. Uh, these ones look more like mushrooms, I guess, from uh, from the Mario days. So these are kind of vaguely mushroom sh or squid-shaped aliens. Let's call it squid. So these squid-shaped aliens are worth 30 points. They're the max point we'll score one. So let's go if costume number. So there, there's only two potential costumes here, one or two. So let's grab an or sign here. So we'll say costume number equals one or costume number equals two. So we'll grab two equal signs and pop them inside that or. Got to be careful about how to place those. All right, now let's grab two costume number blocks here from our looks commands. Costume number and costume number. So if costume number equals one or two, then we're going to change our score by, as I said, I'm trying to be authentic here. So in the original game, they were worth 30 points. We're going to make them worth 30 points here. Okay, let's duplicate this. Now, this is getting a little bit more confusing. So we want, now we've got them set, we got it uh, detecting whether they were in costume one or two. Now we need to check the next two rows. So we basically need to have a range selected here between costume three, four, five, or six, right? So basically we can say if costume number is greater than a certain number or less and less than a certain number. So we can't use an or sign here. We could use an or for every possibility. So we could say if costume number is three or four or five or six, 
But in this case, because we got four entries, let's do it a little differently. We'll do an and statement in here. So let's go and. So we'll say, and we need a, so we need to know that it's greater than a certain number and less than a certain number. So costume number, we're looking for costume three. We can't put a three here, so we'll put a two. If it's greater than two, and we want it to be six or less, so we'll say, and costume number is less than seven. So basically, what numbers are greater than two and less than seven? Well, it's three, four, five, and six. So that's our proper choice here. And we'll change our score by 20 here. Okay. And the last choice is basically if we're wearing costume eight, nine, 10, or 11. So we could, again, do an or statement, or we could do a range like this. But the easiest way to solve this is we'll do a totally different plan here. We'll just say if it's greater than 6. So all the other costumes they're going to be wearing are going to be greater than 6. So let's just go ahead and do that. If costume number is greater than 6, then change score. by and these guys score 10 points okay we might as well make that score variable visible we're going to be replacing it later with an actual rendered score we're going to make it look like the original space invaders but for now we'll just use the default scratch scoring system here and you can see that now we're going to be scoring points as we kill these guys let's go ahead <laughs> Beautiful. And you can see that as we get the guys higher up on the list here, they're worth more points. This last guy was 90. And there you see we get 30 points for killing him. Okay, looking good so far. Now, uh, next thing on the agenda here is to get the aliens shooting, of course. So let's get them creating bullets next. Um, so we're going to be using a little bit of math to get them firing randomly, but we want them firing randomly in a way so that um, there's always roughly the same number of bullets coming down. So what that means is when there's lots of aliens, they can't, like if we told the aliens to shoot mm, once every half second or something, that would be fine if there's one alien on the, on the screen, but there's actually 55 aliens on the screen, which means 55 bullets are gonna come down at you. We want basically two or three bullets coming down at you at a, on at you at a time. So we're going to have to basically divide that by the number of aliens so that when there's lots of aliens, they're shooting less often. And when there's fewer aliens, they're shooting more often. So we can still keep bullets in the air and make it more difficult even as these guys are, um, are coming down the screen here. So let's, as uh, they're starting to get killed. Okay. So um, we're going to do a, a new block here that say when I receive start marching. So these guys, this is a separate block of code here that is going to control just their shooting. So when I receive, let's go to our events blocks. When I receive start marching, this is one of many things that happen when these aliens start marching. Let's go ahead. Um, we don't want any bullets coming down right now. We'll give you a second to get oriented on the screen. So let's just wait one second. And then we'll get into a loop where we keep creating these. So let's do another repeat until my new favorite block for today. We'll go to operators and we'll do again, enemy count is equal to zero. So keep shooting, and sorry, keep shooting us until there's no more aliens left to shoot us. Okay here, so now we need to wait basically until um, we're allowed to shoot. Now we're talking to all our clones here. You should be aware that when I receive works just like a when I start as a clone, it tells everyone to start waiting. Basically and each one of these guys is gonna be picking its own random number about when to shoot, but based on the number of guys that are here. So let's go grab a wait here under control. We'll go wait one second, but inside here, we're going to wait an, um, a different amount of time depending on uh, a couple of different variables. So the first thing, let's go grab a division sign. So we want them to be shooting faster every time we advance to the next level, not faster, but more often. So we're gonna divide 
by the level here. So our level is level one at first, which means that we're gonna shoot at whatever the default time is. But on level two, we're actually gonna shoot twice as often because it's gonna be divided by two, the wait time is gonna be divided by two, then it'll be divided by three and four until eventually there's so many bullets. Now, I'm not sure if this is um, similar to the way that Space Invaders handles it in its original AI, but I thought this would uh, be a simple way to make the game a little bit harder as we continue to play it. All right. Um, now we, we need to wait a certain amount of time based on the number of enemies. So we have a variable here called enemy count. And right now you can see that's at 47. But when I start the game again, it'll go up to 55, which is the total number of guys on the screen here right now. Okay, so we're going to wait enemy count. We're going to pick a random number. So let's go ahead and pick a random number under our sensing blocks here. Pick a random number from one to enemy count. So at first it's gonna be a one in 55 chance that they have of shooting uh, divided by one. So it's gonna be one fifty-fifth. So basically, um, so they're gonna be waiting on average one, so it, Every second, each of these guys has a one in 55 chance of shooting, which basically amounts to about one shot coming down every second. But of course, because it's random, sometimes you have two or three bullets coming down at once, and sometimes you'll have zero. It seems to work pretty well here uh, after play testing this a bit. Okay, so once we've decided to create our bullet, our wait time is over. Let's go ahead and create a clone of ourselves. No, not of ourselves, but of the bomb. Okay, that's gonna create a clone of the bomb. Now we have to tell the bomb where to go. Um, the only, so this block here knows which clone it's talking to. So right here is where we have to save the position of that clone. So let's go ahead and go set. Uh, we're gonna create a new variable here. Let me go to our variables. And that'll be the location of the bomb. So we're basically gonna say set our current location, the location of the alien, and set a variable with that number. And that will help the um, bombs know where to drop from, which alien's actually shooting them. So let's go set bomb X to our current X position. We actually aren't gonna need those bubbles. And I'm gonna set bomb Y to our Y position, our current Y position. There we go. So we don't need those little bubbles after all. Let's trash them. All right, so our guys know where to shoot, but they still aren't appearing yet. So let's go back over to our bomb and start coding that. So before we um, code the cloning here, we just wanna make sure that the master guy is hidden. So let's go in green flag, clicked, hide. That'll keep that main alien in uh, bullet invisible. Um, let me just switch back to the original guy again here. So he's invisible already. Let me just show you what the bullets look like. So there's these little squiggly patterns. The creators of the original game created four different animations for this. It just basically show it squiggling around. Uh, it basically um, will look a little bit like a uh, like a lightning bolt going zzz, um, as it comes down. So the alien bullets look a little different from our own spaceship bullets, which are more kind of straight. All right, so these alien bombs, let's go back and code them. We'll need a when I start as a clone here. So let's go ahead and grab a when I start as a clone here. And we're gonna tell these guys to go to the front layer. We want them to be in front of those shields and in front of anything else that's coming at them in the opposite direction. So um, let's go go to the front, looks. Go to front layer. And we want to tell them to go to the location that we just stored, the location of the alien that shot them, that shot that bullet. So let's say go to, and we'll go to our variables and grab those two bubbles, bomb X, 
under the x coordinate and bomb y in the y coordinate. And then we'll tell them to show because of course they're invisible. Now let's grab a repeat until block again here. So again, we're going to do the same thing. They're just going to repeat moving until they touch the edge of the screen. Along the way, we'll check and see if they're touching a shield or touching our ship, of course. But um, right now, the, the main loop is just going to run entirely until it touches the edge of the screen. So let's go touching edge. And inside there, we're going to put another repeat until loop. Here's where we're going to be changing the animation of the costume. We have four costumes to cycle through. We're going to use the next costume, but we're going to check and see if we're on that last costume and then flip it back to the original one here. So let's go to our motion blocks here. We'll just start with a change Y by, we're going to have them shoot at a speed of five, but they're going down, so it's got to be minus five. Let's just start with that, and then we will add the um, animation in just a second here. So you can see that they're just going to start randomly shooting bullets down the screen beautifully. And you can see every one of them shooting, they all start at different heights, and that's all perfect. So you can see that they're in front of the other aliens, which is the way that we want them so that we can see them. Okay, good. All right, so now let's just change their animation. It's a very subtle difference to the animation, but we are going to do a next costume in here. So let's go next costume. And we're going to say, um, Oh yeah, I was saying there is another repeat until here. So here's what we do. So we've got our guy shooting right now, but now we're gonna have him repeat until, and this is how we're gonna get him to, to go back to his original animation. So let's do another repeat until in here. We'll put these blocks in here so we'll nest it inside. So we're also repeating until so we're inside the one one loop, and then we're putting ourselves inside another loop where it repeats the change costume until our costume number is equal to four. So let's grab an equal sign. We'll put a four there, and we'll grab our costume number from our looks. So repeat until costume number is four, and then when it gets to four, it'll exit this loop, this inner loop, but it'll continue running around the second loop. And so when it exits this first loop, we're gonna switch the costume back. So let's go switch costume back to Alien Bomb again. And now it's gonna cycle through the four animations. Let's have a look at that. It's very subtle, but you will see that these shots are now animating and squiggling around a little bit on the screen and they look a little bit more realistic. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so now the our bullets work, but the alien bullets don't work. So next up, we are going to be making the alien bullets able to kill us and we'll be going to be a lot closer to getting a video game going. Okay, let's switch back to the spaceship sprite again. And here's where we're going to add a little bit of code to make our character get killed by alien bombs. So this event will be triggered. We're going to start checking as soon as the round starts. So when I receive start round, which actually happens before the aliens start marching, it happens just a couple of seconds before that. Uh, we wait one second, and that just gives us everything a bit of time to um, make sure everything is going before we start detecting things. Um, now, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to repeat this until we run out of lives. So we're just going to run this in a constant loop. Uh, repeat until lives are equal to zero. So it's gonna keep running through this until our lives are equal to zero. And inside this loop, we are going to be checking to see, so let's use an if statement, 
checking to see if we're touching a bad guy bullet. But we'll also put a, uh, aliens in here as well, because the aliens are finally going to get down low enough on the board that they can kill us at some point. So we're going to want to check and see if they're touching us as well. And the same thing's going to happen in both cases. So why not just deal with both of them right now? So I'm going to grab an or statement. We're looking to see if you're touching two different things. We'll grab a touching block here and change it to touching bomb or touching alien. There we go. Now, here's what's gonna happen. As usual, when we get killed, a bunch of things have to happen all more or less at once. So let's start with what we look like. We'll switch to a costume that has it exploding. So switch costume to explode one. Let me show you what that looks like on the screen here. This is an original Space Invaders graphic. There's also an Explosion 2 graphic here. And it doesn't look too much different. It just has, it gives the appearance that it's kind of spreading out. So we'll change to Explosion 1 first. And let's change our variables. We've got to take one of our lives away. So we'll change our health. No, sorry, our lives by a minus 1. Now we're going to play a sound effect. I have a nice little sound effect from the original game. It's called Explosion. Here it is. There we go. We'll play that. So we'll just use a start sound in this case because we don't really want to delay anything. Start sound. Then we're going to do some very carefully controlled waits here to change the animation. So we'll wait 0.1 seconds. And then we're going to switch costumes to Explode 2. Then we're just going to give a second to refresh everything. So we're going to go wait one second. And then we'll switch the costume back to our original ship again. Switch costume back to our original ship. And that'll keep going until we run out of lives, in which case we break out of this loop. And when we do, we broadcast an event called Game Over. And that's not in there right now, so let me set it up right now. All right, I had a look at the alien okay, bomb. Looking it good. Didn't take much Let's try that to see if we can get clobbered I by a bad guy. I mentioned here. that we were supposed to delete the clone at the end of this, but I didn't. So we're checking here to see if the bullet's Going touching the edge, and when it exits this loop, um, excellent. After it has touched the edge, we should be bullets are getting clone. stuck so at the bottom of the screen. I think I didn't have them delete. I thought I called there that will get delete bullets and clear them. They went off the screen. Long. I'm gonna have a quick um, look at that. I'll okay, right so we're basic finished with the base mechanic of the game. We can kill the aliens, and the alien can kill us. Now we just need to add the little bells and whistles that make this so much fun. So um, a couple of things we're gonna do here. Sorry, just trying to maximize the screen. Um, first of all, let's go ahead and code the shields. Um, so the shields are actually a really interesting little bit of coding here. I puzzled for a long time over how to do this and make it look realistic. I thought about maybe cutting the shield up into little, uh, little sub sprites that could each disappear one at a time um, as the shields were blocked away. But then I realized that there'd probably be a better way to do it using the paint commands. Now you can't paint or use your pen tool on a sprite. It just scratch just doesn't work that way. You can only paint on backgrounds. So in order for this clever little technique to work, we have to take this shield sprite and paint it onto the background of our game. We can do that using the rubber stamp tool that's actually built into the pens. Okay, so pens aren't um, included in Scratch by default. We have to load them up. It's a little extension that we can click on the bottom left here to find, right down there. We'll click on that button and we'll click on the pen selection here. And that gives us a selection of eight new tools that we can use. Um, so let's go ahead and start coding that. So when the green flag is clicked inside the shield here, Let's bump up that size a bit. First thing we're going to want to do with the pen tool is um, the pen is one 
um, object that doesn't delete itself in between games. If you draw something, stop and click the green flag, your drawing will stay on the screen. That's different from clones, for example, which will always disappear as soon as you hit the stop button. So these are permanent changes to your screen until you erase them or until you actually reload the Scratch interface. So I'm going to grab this Erase All just to make sure that our um, shield damage from the last game isn't still stuck there. And that'll reset our shields back again. Now our, our original guy... Oh, so we're going to show this sprite and then we're going to hide it again when we're done. We're just going to stamp it down a few times and then we'll hide it. Let's get it to its starting position. So I just, um, again, using that overlay that I created last week, let me show that to you again. I created a design template here that's based on the look of the old game. And then I use that to position my new shields. I position them right around here. And you'll see that location is pretty close to what I had there. So I had minus 8398. This is come. I'm just one pixel off from what I thought. Minus 90, minus 83, minus 98. Okay, so no matter where our shields are on the screen, they're going to pop it back to that spot when they get the command to do so, just like that. And then we just need them to stamp themselves down and then space themselves. So I did some playing around to see how far apart the stamp would have to be, and it turned out it was 55 pixels. How can we confirm that? Well, let's have a look here. 55 pixels, and I'm just going to attach that to a um, to a keyboard command here, so I can just test it out and maximize it. I'll attach it to the letter A, and. Let me just show you that. So when I hit the A key, you'll see that clone will jump on top of the other one. When I hit it again, each time that's a 55 pixel difference. We might be able to get away with 54, but 55 feels pretty good to me. All right, so instead of putting in four different locations, though, we're just gonna use a loop to draw these. So repeat ourselves four times. And each time we're gonna use our stamp tool to make a copy of that sprite right down under our current location. And then we're going to shift our clone over. We'll just go change X by 55. And then once we're done with that uh, reference sprite, we'll hide it again once we've finished making our clones. Okay, I'll switch back to the plain backdrop that doesn't have the design on it. And let's just have a look at these guys spawning. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got our shields drawn. Now we need our shields to be, able to be damaged by uh, enemy missiles and by our own missiles. So we're gonna have to code it in two different places so that we can destroy these things. Remember, we're gonna be destroying them by uh, painting on top of these with black. Um, let's start with the alien lasers or the alien bombs, right? So I've got some costumes inside the alien bomb, as I mentioned earlier, that kind of look like random damage from one of these, these things hitting the shield and exploding a piece of it. So they're gonna hack a chunk off of it, basically. All right, back to the bomb here. Now this is all gonna happen inside the loop where we're checking to see if, um, start repeat until touching edge. Yeah, this loop here, which is where uh, we're switching through the costumes for alien bomb, basically, right? So we've got a repeat until loop here. Inside the repeat unto, until loop, while we're switching costumes, we'll just do a quick check here. So I'm gonna grab an if statement. I'm gonna put it on, sorry, inside the repeat until right underneath the next costume. So just drag it up underneath the next costume and drop it like that. So just to confirm you're in the right place, you've got two repeat untils kind of diagonal, and then you've got three things inside that last repeat until, including the if statement on the bottom here. Okay, good. So now we're gonna check and see if we're touching the color. Now there's a few other things that are the same shade of green here. So what we're gonna say is if we're touching the color and the bullet is above a certain Y value, above a certain height, then it will have hit a shield. There's nothing green above Y of minus 115. Everything above here that's green is gonna be a shield. So that's a nice way that we can confirm that it's a shield. But we also need to check for the color as well because we don't want it just randomly deleting itself. 
Okay, so let's go to our sensing blocks. We'll grab a touching color block and drag it in there. But we need to put an and in there first so we can fit our two things in. Touching color. And now I'm going to use my little eyedropper tool right here to select the color from the game. So I'll move my cursor over on top of this shield. Click. And now I've sampled that exact shade of green. So touching color and I need a greater than sign here. So arrow pointing to the right. And we're going to say Y position, which is under our motion blocks. If our Y position where we are is greater than minus 115 by we, I mean the bomb, of course. So if the bomb is within both these circumstances, touching green and above minus 115, then I want, um, so it's probably touching right at the edge. What I want to do is embed this bomb a little deeper into the, um, into the shield before it blows itself up. So we're gonna keep it moving a little bit. We're gonna change our Y by minus three. That'll just drop it a few pixels down into the thing. And then we're gonna switch our costume. So let's go to looks. We'll go switch costume. Oh, sorry, switch costume, not backdrop. Now, I want to pick a random costume here, basically. We've got a bunch of different damage costumes here. There are costumes 5 through 9 here. So let's go switch costume to a, pick random number from 5 to 9. And that way we'll get kind of random looking bomb damage as we do that. And... Then when we're done, oh, sorry, I've put this into the wrong place. This has to be, ah, I put a second switch. Okay, I see the second switch costume here that we um, still need. Okay, sorry, so I'm programming this switch costume, which is right underneath change Y. I'm going to put the 5 to 9 in there. Okay, and so once we pick that costume, we stamp it down. We use that stamp tool to tell it to paint that sprite on that black sprite on top of the shield. So with that out of the way, let's have a look and see what it looks like when our shields are being destroyed. There we go. Though there's a problem here, right? Our um, sh our bombs are not getting deleted when they hit the shield. They're going straight through the shield. So that first bit of damage they're doing is legit. They just, we just need to delete the shield after that. So let's have a look at this code here. There should be a delete code, delete this clone right after that. Yeah, so right after the stamp, we're gonna need to delete the clone just to get rid of that. And, and then it'll just work the first time. Let's try that again. Green flag, our shields fix themselves and let's wait for them to be shot here. I'll hide behind the protection, the safety of my shield here. Here comes some bullets. There it goes, one just touched the edge. Not doing a very good job of attacking my shield here. There we go, okay, that's looking good now, nice. All right, so we have destructible shields now that will keep you protected. Now, one of the strategies uh, that pros use in uh, Space Invaders, especially in the later levels, is they hide behind their shields and pierce through them with a little narrow little hole. Now, my bullets are not, are just ignoring the shields right now, so we're going to have to program our bullets to, to um, bounce off of the shields and to do damage to them, and then we'll be able to start using that strategy. So let's go over to our bullets and we're gonna be doing something similar with this touching color Y block. So I'm just gonna take this block and drag it over to the laser because I know I will be looking for it there anyway. Let's go over to the laser. Now let's have a look at where in the code that happens. All right, so when I started the clone, here's the block. So this is just the laser moving. It switches to a laser costume and keeps moving until it's touching the edge of the screen upon which it deletes itself. Okay, so inside this loop, we're gonna add another check here with another repeat until loop here. Uh, oh yeah, so we're, no, we're, we're gonna put an if statement in here first. This is where we're if we're touching that colored block. So we actually need both items. We also need to check the Y coordinates too, eh? 
All right, let's go ahead and we'll do, the, we'll grab an and there. I should have just copied the whole thing over. So if touching color green and y is greater than minus 110, the, the reason for that is now that we're detecting color, our laser will actually start off touching us. So our laser will delete itself the second it appears on the screen if you don't add this Y position check here. So this will only start working once the bullet gets high enough to be touching the shields above a Y of minus 110. Okay, so once we're touching the shield, um, we're going to uh, continue moving up. Oh, okay, I'm trying, seeing what I did here. So, um, all right, we're kind of slowly repositioning the shield. So I want it to be on top of the spot where the shield is. Right now when it's touching, because these um, bullets are moving so fast at a speed of 10, they could be in any one of a bunch of different locations. When the script comes around to de and detects them, they could be just touching the edge of the shield. Um, let me show, let me illustrate that over here in the drawing tool. I think that would be a good way to do it. So let's go over to our shield. So imagine that, um, yeah, let's pretend this is a bullet here. Let's make it a little bit smaller, like two pixels. Okay, so here's my missile. It's coming up, it's moving at a speed of 10. So every single turn it moves up 10 as the computer comes around. So let's say it's here and it's and it moves up at 10. It might be at this spot when it detects that it's inside the green, or it might be up here, or it might be down here. If we stamp black on top of this when it's when it's right here, it's not going to look the same as if we put it here. So what we're going to do is basically, as soon as it detects, um, as soon as it detects red, we're going to uh, sorry sorry. As soon as it detects green, we're going to change it's Y by a, a down, we're gonna keep going down until we're no longer touching. So we're gonna move it down one and check, am I still touching the shield? Yes or no, and if, we're, if, if we still are, we're gonna keep going down until we're no longer touching the shield, like we're right down here. And then we'll know exactly where we are, we'll have a reference point, and then we'll move it up again so that it's in exactly the spot where we want it to be. So that's kind of what we're up to here, so this will make a little bit more sense. So inside, this um, repeat loop. I think this is the wrong spot in the code again. Just let me find that. Sorry, I shouldn't be inside the shield. I should be inside the laser here. That's why I'm a bit confused. Okay, so inside this if statement, we're gonna start checking. We'll do a repeat until in here. And we're gonna say repeat until not touching color green. So let's go to our knots. And I'm just gonna copy this Color, touching color block here. And so we're again, we're gonna move it down screen a little bit until it's no longer touching. So we'll change Y just by negative one at a time. This will all happen so fast you won't really see it going on when the explosion happens. And then we're going to, um, oh, we also wanna hide it. Before we start moving it down, we're gonna hide it because we don't actually wanna see the bullet doing these weird jiggly motions up and down here. All right, it's gonna move it. And then once it discovers it's no longer inside the shield, then we'll break out of that loop. And right outside of that loop here, we're gonna move it back up into the shield again, exactly seven pixels. So right down here, we're outside of the repeat until still inside the if. So if you're confused by where this spot is, you'll see there's two rows of loop underneath it and then it goes inside and there's a loop right above it. Okay, and we'll change, and that shouldn't be a move, sorry, it would be change y by seven. Okay, uh, a couple of other things we have to do here. So let's make it visible so we can stamp it. We can't stamp an invisible object. Let's go show. And then we're gonna to switch to one of those random costumes again. So we'll go switch costume to pick random. And the numbers for that are basically any costume from two to seven. I have six different explosion costumes that I've drawn here, all kinds of different fun costumes for the kind of damage this is gonna do on our side. And 
So now that we've picked the costume, we'll stamp it again. And then we'll delete the clone because we don't need it anymore. And that will get rid of our laser. Okay, let's try that out on this end here. Max the screen out. So now from underneath here, oh, uh oh, I've done something to glitch our bullets. I'll have a quick look at that and I'll be right back. Okay, it turned out to be no big deal at all. I went back and looked at my code and realized that I'd accidentally detached this little bit while I was coding. So there's nothing wrong with my actual code. Let's reattach it here. And now we can test our game mode, green flag. And when our aliens appear, we start shooting there. You, know, you can see that we can add damage to the shields here. It's a little teeny delay before we see it, but I don't think it's a tragedy. And you can see that we can basically blast a hole through it, takes a few shots. But now we have a neat little hole right down the middle of our shield here that we can use to defend ourselves while we attack these bad guys. We can be pretty cool, actually. So I just taught you guys an MLG strategy for um, how to be really good at Donkey Kong. Now it's so important on these levels, but when you get far more bullets happening later on in the game, um, you're going to want to rely on whatever little bit of shield you can get. All right. So um, I, we're done with the shield on both ends. They're being attacked from both sides. Um, we're running out of time here. I'm going to add the UFOs at the top of the screen. I think we're going to save the last of it for part three or final part here. So mostly what we're going to be doing in the last stage is changing these readouts like this score here to an actual number basically. And um, that, um, so we're going to basically use uh, a prefabricated font that I've created. It's the actual Space Invaders font. I showed you guys this last week as well. We've got a whole bunch of letters here. Let me make them visible so you can see here the letters C at the top of the screen. And so as I go through these costumes, you can kind of see the letters here a little bit. Well, let's max that out a little bit more. Then I can't change costumes. Okay, there we go. So you can see B, C, D, E, and we're going to be using those next week to create numbers for the scores and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you how to dynamically create text on the screen using a prefabricated font. And we're going to be using a, uh, a text engine to do that. That's something that I grabbed from someone else. There's another problem showing up here, if you haven't noticed, and that is that our aliens aren't eating the shields as well. We want them to actually eat the shields when they're on top of it. Maybe I should do that first before we do anything else. So let's go over to our shields and have a look at what code should be inside them. So the code for eating the shields is actually inside the aliens. It's all coming back to me now. So inside the aliens here, we're going to be detecting, touching that color. Here it is. Okay. So we're going to find the block where we're, um, which is when I start marching. So let's find the start marching. That's the main AI for the aliens. Here's the start marching. There it is. So inside there, there's a delete this clone. And right after this, the delete this clone. Um, so we're still inside this repeat until loop. We're going to put another if statement right down here underneath these other two if statements. So we're just going to have three parallel if statements here. So let me drop another if statement right here. You can see they're lined up perfectly on top of each other here in a straight line. Okay, so we're going to say touching color again. So if we're touching that green color, otherwise we're not really that interested. This is only to be at the end if our aliens are touching the shields. And we're going to use that stamp technique again to um, erase the shields. So we're going to set. All right, we want 
we're going to switch our, our aliens to a new costume. And it's a little black costume like this that's going to basically erase the shield. But when we do that, we have to remember what costume we were wearing so we can put it back on again. So we're going to use a little temporary variable here called current costume. And we're going to save our position, save what our costume is, switch to the black costume. And then once we paint stamped, we'll switch it back to the original costume again. All right, so if touching color set sir current costume to whatever our current costume number is. So let's go figure out what costume number we're wearing using this costume number. So our current costume number will be fed into that variable. We'll keep it stored there. Then we're gonna switch our costume back to black again to that black that's gonna be our eraser font. And then we're gonna stamp down that black. And then we're gonna switch back to the current costume. So let's go looks, switch costume to, and we'll put in the costume we're switching to, we'll just call it current costume. That is the costume we're currently wearing. Okay. Um, now, I see some code that I haven't put in here yet. Well, this is for after we die, I think. Yeah, so this script is repeating until they were all out of enemies. So this is what's happening at the end of the round when we're all out of enemies. I just have a couple of blocks here. We're going to wait one second. And then we're going to broadcast another start round again here. I forgot to add that earlier, but now is as good a time to do that as any. So we'll go start round. Okay, we're going to trust that works. We're just going to play the game one last round through once we get our aliens set up here. So let's go ahead and set up our aliens and then we'll be done for today. So. All right. All right, so this doesn't appear to be a green flag here. I'm trying to remember what I did with my own code here. All right, so when I receive start round is when, oh, I understand why. So the UFO is basically hidden at the beginning and it's off on the side of the screen and it'll always be there. And there's not much we really have to do to initialize it here. So, so it's just going to start basically doing some random checks to see whether it should be activated. The, so the UFO goes across the top of the screen at random times every once in a while. And it's worth a random number of points, either 50, 100, or 150. So that's what we have to program there right now. Let's go ahead and do a hide. We want it hidden um, at the beginning of the round and pretty well always hidden unless it's going across the screen. Let's put a forever underneath there. All right, so we're just gonna wait here inside this loop until our random timer runs out. So wait until, oh no, again, I keep doing this. We're going to wait a certain number of seconds. So we'll go wait one second and wait a random number of time. So the random number I picked, you could tweak this a little bit. I figured it would be at least five seconds before the first alien showed up. And so I made it a 10 second range. So anywhere from five to 15 seconds is where he's gonna show up. When he does, we're gonna broadcast a message called UFO appears. Broadcast UFO appears. Let's do a new message. And that's going to start a few things going, including the background sound. The alien has a very unique sound, and I don't want to do it inside here because it's going to mess up our movement. So I'll, I'll, that's one of the reasons we're, we have a second event going here, just to control the sounds from elsewhere in the script. Okay, so let's go switch our costumes. So our, our UFO has an explosion costume and a UFO costume. So let's make sure we're wearing the explosion costume. Switch costume to UFO, and then we'll show we want him to be visible. And let's go to a starting position. Um, so in my original code, I um, I had him appearing 
always from the right hand side of the screen, but I played a few rounds of Space Invaders here and realized that it can come from either side of the screen. So let's actually do a trick that I learned from my son Jeffrey for getting this guy to either side of the screen here, basically. So let's tell him to go to the middle of the screen. So an X of zero, and the Y will be up high where we want him to be, at a Y of 115. Then we'll just send him off the edge of the screen in either direction. So let's go pick a random number from one to two. We're just gonna flip a coin here. So we're gonna go if, pick random one or two is equal to, so let's grab an equal to. Oh, we'll do an if else there, I think actually, if else. And then we just can deal with the whole thing in one fell swoop. So we'll grab an equal to sign here. If pick random one to two is equal to one, then we will move it. We're gonna change its X coordinate. Now our screen is 480 wide, so we just have to move it 240 in one direction. So if we get uh, going one way, we'll switch it to 240, which will take it all the way off the right. And if it's the other way, we'll, uh, we'll move it to minus 240, basically. And, um, yeah. So now uh, we have to be careful though, because when we get it moving now, we're gonna have to remember what side of the screen it started from so that we can have it moving that way. So it's gonna make the movement a little more challenging here. Oh, okay. So what we can basically do here is, let's do inside this loop here, we're gonna do the same thing basically twice. We're gonna check and see, we're gonna do a repeat until and move the guy until he is off the screen. So repeat until X position is less than or greater than. So I'm gonna grab a less than and a greater than. We're just gonna do this whole thing twice. Whoops, let's duplicate this. Repeat until less than, not greater than. Okay, so we're basically going to tell it to keep tell it to keep moving until it gets to the edge of the screen. So in this case, we're going to say x position less than do 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 x position is right here. We'll drag it in from here. X position, x position, and so the number we're looking for for the less than is less than minus one fifty, which is this le at right edge of the screen minus one fifty. And the right edge of the screen, of course, is positive 150. So once, so if our guy is on the right-hand side of the screen, we need to check to see whether he's going off the left side of the screen and vice versa here. There we go. And depending on what direction he's moving, we're gonna put a change Y in here to make him go in a different direction. So in this case, he's moving left. So let's make him move at a speed of a minus one. And here we'll make him move at a speed of positive one. Okay, that's how they get these guys moving across the screen. They're not detecting. Oh, I see the guy moving down here. Did I put something? Oh, I put a change X in here. Will it change Y? Yeah, sorry, this should be a change Y. By one. Okay, so we don't have any sound effects and our guys can't be shot yet, so we're not done, but let's just have a quick look in here inside the game and see if we can get our guy to show up. Looks like he's glitched at the bottom of the screen here, but once the code begins in earnest, it'll reset itself to the proper position, I'm hoping. Have we been through 15 seconds yet? Okay, so either our script isn't working or I'm just being impatient here. Yeah, it looks like I've done something wrong here. I'm going to take another little break and I'll be right back.
Okay, so Mr. T is obviously not on the ball today. It turned out there were three different things wrong. I did a bunch of this on the fly, and I think my head's just not in the game today, guys. So let's go through all the things we have to fit, fix in this glitchy code. First of all, a couple of obvious things. I was changing my Y, which makes me go up and down. I want the UFO to go left, right. So we're changing this first Y to a change X, and we're changing it to minus one. The second x here so these are all x's all of these change x's first we change by 150 and minus 150 i had said change by 240 before as well so that has to change as well the idea is we don't want the ufo starting from this far edge of the screen we want it to start from the virtual edge of the screen because we have basically a virtual game being created inside this little window within a window here to keep it the same look and feel as the original game. So those numbers have to be 150 uh, down here and minus 150 up here, and we're changing our X. One other thing at the very top here, I had something else going on in here when I, re I forget what I had it saying, but it's supposed to say start round as well. So I said that, but I didn't actually do it on the screen when I set up the code. Okay, so I think we're good now. Let's try clicking the green flag and wait for one of those aliens to appear. Hopefully not too long. Got the hiccups here. There comes one right away. And you can see it comes across the left side of the screen. Now I haven't programmed them to hide again. So let's do that right now. But he is appearing the way he's, he's supposed to, and he's moving in the direction that he's supposed to be facing. So we're all good there. We just need to add a titch more code at the bottom here. And basically that is at the end of all of these loops here, once our guy, he's moving around forever, basically. Um, and when he finishes moving right here, this will be at the end of all of his movement. He's been waiting here, and then he'll run through this, and the, then before he loops around and waits again, we'll reset him. We'll pull. first of all, we want to um, we want the music to stop. So I've got another um, block of code there controlling the music, which is the sound that he's going to be making. And it's actually one of two different random sounds. So we're just going to set a variable here. The variable is called UFO music stop. To one and that will let the other script to know to stop the music playing and then we go to our looks commands here and tell our guy to hide and then he'll be ready for the next time that he appears again okay a little bit more code on this robot I know we've been going for quite a while here so let's make our UFO vulnerable to missiles first we'll grab a uh, when I receive which is an event when I receive and I've got an event here called UFO killed. It's not here yet, so let's do it right now. UFO killed. Now here's where we're gonna control the music. So I don't remember, oh, we're gonna add the UFO killed inside the laser in just a second here. We're gonna, but right now, let's just control what happens when he dies. We'll go to our sound commands here and we'll stop all sounds for just a second. The only other sounds are the repeated boom, boom sound that's going on right now and if one of those gets cut short it'll just come back again the next beat so we can just stop all the sounds here then we're going to set our variables we're going to set so when he's killed we're also going to stop that music so let's set music stop to one ufo music stop we're going to record where our ufo is at the moment that he died so we're going to use that as a variable. We don't need to record his Y axis because he's always on the same uh, Y. So we just have to record what his X axis variable is. And we're going to make that his current X position. So we're just going to store that and then send that information over to the code that's going to make a score appear right on top of him so that we'll know that... Um, whether we got 50, 100, or 150 points when we killed him, it'll appear right on top of him. We won't get to that until next week, though. All right, switch costume. Let's go to our looks commands. We'll switch costume here to an explosion graphic. Switch to explosion. We're going to play a sound here. And again, we're going to use a play sound until done. And this is, I believe, the same explosion sound we were already using. 
And so that'll keep the explosion on the screen for just a second while it plays. And then once it's done playing, we can go ahead and hide now. So that um, will tell the alien what to do when he's killed. I can actually run that just to see, show you guys what that looks like. So when I click on that, you can see he switches to a little explosion and he blows up. Okay, good. Um, now, That's the other part we're doing here it has to do with the score. All right, so here's where our music gets going here. So we have a UFO appears event. When I receive, the UFO appears. And we've already broadcast that message over here. So it'll be received right here. It'll get a parallel process going. So while this stuff is happening over here, we're also going to be playing noises over here. And so that's one of the things we did with that message is we split our code into two chunks that are working simultaneously. So let's set that variable that's keeping track of whether the music is playing. We'll turn it to zero. Set up, uh, so UFO music stop is zero, which means we don't want to stop it. And then let's grab an if else statement here. So we're going to tell it to choose between two different music tracks, a high pitched one and a low pitched one. Let me play those for you. So the high pitched one sounds like this and the low pitched one sounds like this. And they more or less come at random if I remember my Space Invaders co correctly. So, um, all right. So we're just going to pick a random number from one to two here. So let's go pick, we'll grab an equal sign first. So we're going to say if a random number, this is our coin flip again, if between one and two is equal to one, then we're going to play the high pitch sound until done. Play sound high pitch. And let's duplicate that one and we'll grab the low pitched one here. So it'll just pick a random and it's going to, oh, both of those have to go in a, to a repeat here. And so here's what we're going to keep them repeating until that variable changes. So repeat until equal to, and we'll go UFO music stop is equal to one. So when it gets that message that the music should stop playing, then it'll stop. Otherwise, it's going to just keep repeating the sound until done. It's probably a more elegant way to code this. But this is really fine. Okay, so that's working. We just need the ability to shoot these guys. So let's go back to our laser again and find the spot where we're supposed to be getting into the UFO dead here. Here it is. When I start as a clone inside the laser, there's a separate stream of code for that. So we'll go to our control blocks. When I start as a clone, we're gonna start checking forever to see if a UFO is on the screen, if, we're, if our bullet's touching a UFO. So we'll go if forever, if, Touching UFO, we can grab that from our sensing blocks. Touching UFO. Well, if it is, we're going to broadcast a UFO killed message. We already have done something with that block. Broadcast UFO killed. Now we're going to do another random draw here. So we're going to set a variable. We're going to basically pick for a number from one to three and save that into a variable. So the variable we're saving to is called random score. So set random score to a random number from one to three. There we go. And, um, we're basically gonna, we can't do an if else here. We could do some nested if else, but we're just gonna do three different if statements here because it's because we're doing three things. It's basically a similar idea. So if random score equals one, let's grab an equal sign here. 
Now we'll go to our variables, grab random score. If it's equal to one, we're gonna put that inside or forever here. Then we'll change the score. So we, this is what's gonna be affected, right? Change score to one of three different options here. So the first option is 50 points that we get for killing the alien. And so that's gonna, that's gonna change our total score, but we also wanna know um, what number to post on top of the dead alien so that we know um, how much we scored for killing that alien. So we have another variable here called UFO score. We're gonna set that score because it doesn't have to change, it's not cumulative. So we'll set UFO score to 50 as well. All right, so we just have to do a quick duplicate here. Let's go duplicate that. And we'll say if random score is equal to two, then both these values would be worth 100 instead. And we're gonna do it one third time. And I bet you can guess what we're gonna do here, a three. And this is the max score you can get for killing a UFO, 150. There we go. And at the end of all this rigmarole, we calculate our scores and stuff like that. We're just gonna delete the clone that'll get uh, rid of that laser beam so that it stops flying off the screen. Okay, so now we should be able to shoot the UFOs and get points for it, though they won't appear on, the points won't appear on top of the alien. That'll happen next week. Let's give it a try here. All right, again, that was a simple little glitch here. So I have uh, in my current setup here, I have all of four if statements here are all at the same level. So it's basically checking to see if it's touching a UFO. And then it's looking at this random score thing from before. And this is what's messing us up. And then we're deleting the clone before anything happens. Because as soon as our bullet's created, we're deleting the clone because our random score is still one, two, or three. These three if statements have to be inside of this if statement to work properly. It's amazing how a little thing like that can really mess up your code. Let's give that a try now. And our bullets are working again. So let's here and see what we can do. So these guys are getting killed perfectly. Our game is looking pretty nice now. So we're getting much closer here. A uh, couple of things we're going to be doing next week, guys. Let me stop. Oh, let me just take this yes. Okay. Good. All right. Excellent. Not a bad score for a couple of seconds of play. So, um, next week, we are going to be finishing this game up, guys. We are going to be going uh, and creating a little UFO, or sorry, little My Ship icons at the bottom of the screen here to tell you how many lives you have left. We're going to, um, so we'll have a lives counter here with a little number counter beside it saying how many lives we have. We're also going to have our score represented in writing, and we'll have a high score up here represented in writing as well. I don't think there's any more play mechanics of the game that have to be determined here. Um, and so we're getting very, very close. It's mostly just a matter of finishing up some uh, little things that all have to do with getting text going. And so next week, I'm going to show you how to um, use one of these text engines to change your score into an actual printed number. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so this was really fun. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this lesson. I think this is actually a really good solid lesson. Nothing I've done is super complicated. There's a lot of code because there's a lot of little details to do, but all the steps are fairly simple. So I hope even you guys who are fairly new to Scratch are keeping up with this. And 
remember that to anything that you guys want to make like this, you really just have to break it down into the smaller parts and just start working on it. I don't have any great um, training in coding or anything like that. I just started playing with this stuff one day and just started thinking, okay, what do I want to do? I want this to move. That means I have to change its X coordinate. Okay, but I don't want it to move until this happens. I'm just working through things logically. You can make all of these things yourselves, guys. I really believe in you. I think you can be just as good a coder as, as I am if you just give it a try. So thanks for joining me. I'm going to be back next week with more of this. I'll be back every week, more or less, um, with a new coding session. Every Saturday, I run the Chromeworks Club, which is a live stream broadcast where we do fun little scratch activities and fun kind of classroom activities that have to do with scratch. And every week, I release one new serious heavy-duty coding um, lesson just like this one here. So you can look forward to that in the future as well. Thanks a lot, guys, and I will see you next week.